Okay, so that's that's the basic properties of of each of these segments. Um, just other some other tips and tricks to go over. If we zoom in close, each each segment, each taxi segment begins and ends at a node, right? So these these little pieces here um, are nodes. Um, the nodes also have names. Um, the node names are for your reference only. The uh, world editor will automatically add start and stop as pretty much beginning and end as you create them. It will automatically name whatever the segment name is. For instance, this segment name is Bravo. This node name is Bravo start, and this one's probably Bravo stop up here. Well, it's been split, so it has a different name. But um, the names don't matter to, to the ATC system. It's going to throw them out once it loads it up in X-Plane. Um, but if you want to use them to to take notes or whatever you want to use them for, that's that's fine. The other thing I want to point out, uh, if we turn the runways on again, I'm going to zoom in close here. Now, the runway begins here, right where this mouse is. This yellow section is, uh, is basically the blast pad of the runway, so you're not going to use that for takeoffs or landing. But you could take off here, and the, the instinct, I think, for most people is to drag this runway segment all the way down to the very beginning. Let's, let's make full use of the runway. The problem with that is if you put the, the beginning of the runway there, when you ask to taxi to runway 3-4 right in this example, um, it's always going to taxi you to the end of the runway, and it's going to expect you to go right to that point. And if you don't go right to that point, um, it's, it's going to have a problem with you because it's going to look like you're off course. Depending on how far the the actual point that you're taxing to is. So in this case, it's not that far. You know, it might not have a problem. It might be close enough. We'll say, ah, oh, you got close enough. But you know, in some cases, if if there's a maybe the taxiways up here, um, and let's say aircraft don't typically back taxi, they just take off from up here. It's going to have a real problem with you not going where it's telling you to go. So the recommendation is to start the runway node at a point where the aircraft are actually going to make it to. So you can see here, uh, you know, the aircraft comes down Bravo and he loops around here. And then pretty much every aircraft starts their, their runway alignment up here. I never expect anybody to go back here. Nobody's ever going to back taxi that far. Now, if you're designing an airport that does have, uh, you know, a taxiway, maybe this, let's say this, this segment here, let's say this is the actual taxiway. It's the only taxiway in the airport and real aircraft do back taxi all the way back here. If that's the case, then by all means, you should drag the runway end down here because aircraft are supposed to be doing that. But it's going to look a little silly, and, and earlier versions of X-Plane did do this. Um, you know, aircraft would come over here, and then they'd, they'd come up here and follow the taxiway, and then they would turn around and they would back taxi about three feet, and then they would you'd see a 747 trying to do a, you know, a donut on the runway to turn around again and take off. So... Don't bring your nodes all the way to the end of the runway unless you really want aircraft going there. The other thing I will say, um, try not to do too many fancy turns. Like this one I did specifically because if I turn on the uh, taxiways and tarmac and if I turn on the lines, uh, let's see. All right, so here's the taxi lines. So you can see I tried to mimic the curve as best as I could of the taxi line. And that's because I want aircraft to actually follow this line and not be kind of in this middle zone here. Um, but you'll see there's probably some other sections here where I, I don't round the turns too, too much. Um, let's hide this. All right, so here you can see the line. Like, I'm just not bringing in... I don't mind that the aircraft's off the line. The artificial... Uh, the AI aircraft in X-Plane will anticipate their turns... So you can give it a 90 degree turn and it will cut the inside automatically. Um, I only think I would I think I would only suggest that you try to draw around curves um, if you have a very tight taxiway and you definitely don't want the AI aircraft to cut the inside because they might go into the lawn or something like that. But generally, um, 90 degree turns are okay. You can see right here, um, I didn't try to follow these curves on either side. I just drew a straight 90 degree turn um, between these segments. And that's that's because the, the planes are going to see, oh, I have a sharp turn, and they're going to start turning in here, which is fine. Um, ATC taxi networks, we do not support Bezier curves. 
Um, so don't try to use any any Bezier handles or anything like that. Just just draw them pretty much 90 degrees unless you see the AI aircraft doing silly things, and then you can go in and and maybe you know just cut the corner a little bit. Um, some other things while I have the lines, uh, the taxiway lines turned on, you can see here's a um, let me turn on the taxiway again. All right, so here's the taxiway, and you can see here's a whole short line, and you can see right there is where I make the transition from a regular taxiway with no hold short specified to uh, the runway side of the taxiway. So this far side of the line saying that you need to protect this for runway 16 left and 34 right. So when 16 left and 34 right is active, um, then this becomes a protected zone. So that's one thing I, I should have mentioned earlier, which is if if 16 left and 34 right is not active, there's nothing special about this. It's not going to be um, anything but a regular taxiway and you won't be told to, to hold short of it. 